Hello everyone, it's Teacher Marky once again and welcome to another video lecture. Today's topic is Locating Sources for Academic and Professional Texts. At the end of this video, you should be able to define plagiarism and its type, identify the reasons why some people plagiarize, know the consequences of plagiarism, and learn some strategies in incorporating sources in academic and professional writing. When writing an academic paper, it's okay to use other people's ideas, but you have to give credit where credit is due. Plagiarism means using someone else's work without giving them proper credit. In academic writing, plagiarizing involves using words, ideas, or information from a source without proper citation and taking full credit for them. Let's say you're working on your research paper, and then you find a great article online that has a lot of information useful for your topic. So you take several parts of that article, change a few words, and include it in your paper without giving credit to the original author. That's plagiarism and it can lead to serious consequences. Now, here are a few practices that qualify as plagiarism. Submitting someone else's work and claiming that it is your own. Copying another writer's work with no attempt to acknowledge them. Copying materials from several writers and rearranging them. Changing the words of an original source but uses the ideas without citing. Changing the words of an original source and using the author's ideas with attempts to acknowledge the material source or sources but without correctly citing. Failing to cite, believing that information is common knowledge. And using paragraphs, charts, figures, or images from a source without citing. Plagiarism has four main types, namely direct plagiarism, self-plagiarism, mosaic plagiarism, and accidental plagiarism. The first one is direct plagiarism. This refers to the word-for-word -word transcription of someone's work without quotation or credit. Next is self-plagiarism. This occurs when a student submits his or her own previous work or mixes parts of previous works without asking for permission from the teachers involved. We also have mosaic plagiarism, which occurs when students borrows phrases from a source without quotation marks or finds synonyms for the author's languages while keeping the same structure. And lastly, accidental plagiarism. This occurs when a person neglects to cite their sources or misquotes their sources or unintentionally paraphrases a source by using similar words, groups of words, and or sentence structure without attribution. But why do some people plagiarize? Here are a few reasons why writers plagiarize. They lack confidence. Of all of the reasons for committing plagiarism, this one seems to come up the most consistently, especially in academic environments. A student under pressure to get a good grade but unsure of their writing ability is likely going to be tempted to plagiarize. They lack time. Anyone with a deadline they can't meet is far more likely to plagiarize than one who is comfortable they can make it in time. They are lazy. When an author doesn't take an assignment seriously, the odds that they will simply submit the works of another as their own increases. On the other hand, when author sees the value in a work, their work ethic improves and they're much less likely to plagiarize. They think they will not get caught. Many plagiarize simply because they can, and they feel that they won't get caught. They made a mistake. 
This one is by far the least common, but it does happen. Whether through poor paraphrasing, lost citations, or some other means, mistakes do happen. Plagiarism that results from an error doesn't look like malicious plagiarism. It usually deals more with inadequate attribution than no attribution and is generally smaller in nature. At school, taking credit for someone else's work could mean you fail a subject or face disciplinary action. In the workplace, it could result in damage to your reputation, legal repercussions, or worst, losing your job. Even if you accidentally do it, such as forgetting to cite a source or misquoting someone, it can seriously get you in trouble. Here are some of the possible consequences of plagiarism. Destroyed student reputation. Plagiarism allegations can cause a student to be suspended or expelled. Many schools suspend students for their first violation, and then students are usually expelled for further offenses. Destroyed professional reputation. A professional business person, politician, or public figure may find that the damage from plagiarism follows them for the rest of their career. Not only will they likely be fired or asked to step down from their present position, but they will surely find it difficult to obtain another respectable job. Destroyed academic reputation. The consequences of plagiarism have been widely reported in the world of academia. Once scarred with plagiarism allegations, an academic's career can be ruined. Legal repercussions. The legal repercussions of plagiarism can be quite serious. Copyright laws are absolute. One cannot use another person's material without citation and reference. An author has the right to sue a plagiarist. Some plagiarism may also be deemed as criminal offense, possibly leading to a prison sentence. Monetary repercussions. Many recent news reports and articles have exposed plagiarism by journalists, authors, public figures, and researchers. In the case when an author sues a plagiarist, the author may be granted monetary compensation. Plagiarism can take many forms, from deliberate cheating to accidentally copying from a source without acknowledgement. Consequently, whenever you use the words or ideas of another person in your work, you must always acknowledge where they came from. In academic and professional writing, it is important to properly incorporate your sources. Otherwise, they would appear as though they have been dropped into the writing, and that's not good. The main reason you use citations in your school papers is to give credit to other people's work. This avoids charges of plagiarism and separates your words and thoughts from the words of others. Here are three common strategies for incorporating sources in your writing. Citation, or using words and phrases from another source. Paraphrasing, or stating the ideas from another source in your own words. And summarizing, or giving an overview of many ideas. There are two main types of citation, namely author-oriented citation and text-oriented citation. When using author-oriented citation, begin with the surname of the author, followed by the year of publication in parentheses. For example, Polito 2012 emphasizes that language in an online environment can be understood if other modes of online communication are further analyzed to provide a full account of interaction in virtual world. With text-oriented citation, you begin with a paragraph or sentence from a source followed by the surname of the author of the work and the year of publication enclosed in parentheses. For example, unless educators realize the importance of reading and writing across subject areas, 
Problems in comprehension of subject matter will be a prominent issue in the teaching learning process. Estacio, 2010. Another way of citation is by starting the sentence or paragraph using the phrase according to, followed by the surname of the author and the year of publication and closed in parentheses. For example, according to Mendoza, 1990, by the end of the century, our fuel reserves will be reduced to half, and scarcity of energy supplies will be a big problem. When writing an academic or professional paper, the general rule is, when in doubt, cite. There is no such thing as over-citing, so cite the original source as much as possible. But when is it a must to cite and when is it okay not to cite? You must cite when quoting. Anytime that you use the exact words of another author, you must provide in-text citations. The general convention is to quote only when you could not possibly explain the concept any better in your own words. You must cite when paraphrasing. Paraphrasing requires that you rephrase or restate the original idea and not just simply substitute words and phrases with synonyms and call it your own idea. It still requires a citation. You must cite when summarizing. Citation should occur in each sentence that includes unoriginal material. Even if your entire paragraph is a summary, you should cite in each sentence rather than at the end of the paragraph. You must cite when using facts, statistics, dates, and information. Anytime you use facts, statistics, dates, or unoriginal information, you should cite the source as it is particularly important to build your arguments from reliable sources. It is best practice to cite whenever possible. However, there are certain instances in which citing may not be necessary. It's okay not to cite when using common knowledge. Common knowledge includes facts that are found in many sources. In general, if a fact can be found in five credible sources, a citation is not necessary. Examples of common knowledge are, the only food that doesn't spoil is honey, or elephants are the only animals that can't jump. It's okay not to cite when using generally accepted or observable facts. When a fact is generally acceptable or easily observable, you do not need a citation. For example, smoking may be bad for your health, or most people use cell phones are both generally accepted and easily observable. It's okay not to cite when using original ideas and lived experiences. When writing about yourself or your lived experiences, a citation is not necessary. Original ideas, including the write-up of results from your own research or projects, do not require citations. Another important strategy in incorporating sources into your academic writing is paraphrasing or stating the ideas from another source in your own words. Many students and even professionals often struggle with paraphrasing. So here are a few tips for an effective paraphrase and an example at the end. The meaning conveyed in the paraphrase material should be the same as that of the original source. The length should be the same or almost the same. The structure is different from that of the source. Technical terms or generally accepted terms may be retained. And the source is indicated in the paraphrase. Here are some examples of paraphrased sentences. From the original sentence, 
her lifespan years of incredible change for women as they gained more rights than ever before. You can paraphrase it and write, she lived through the exciting era of women's liberation. Another one is, from the original sentence, giraffes like acacia leaves and hay, and they can consume 75 pounds of food a day. You can paraphrase it and write, a giraffe can eat up to 75 pounds of acacia leaves and hay daily. For a more academic example, the original passage, the number of foreign and domestic tourists in the Netherlands rose above 42 million in 2017, an increase of 9% and the sharpest growth rate since 2006, the National Statistics Office CBS reported on Wednesday. Dutchnews.nl, 2018 Can be paraphrased into According to the National Statistics Office, the Netherlands experienced dramatic growth in tourist numbers in 2017. More than 42 million tourists traveled to or within the Netherlands last year, representing a 9% increase, the steepest in 12 years. Dutchnews.ml, 2018 The consequences of plagiarism are far-reaching and no one is invulnerable. So, before attempting any writing project, learn about plagiarism and some strategies for incorporating outside sources to your paper. Find out what constitutes plagiarism and how to avoid it. The rules are easy to understand and follow. If there's any question about missing attribution, Try using an online plagiarism checker or plagiarism detection software to check your writing for plagiarism before turning it in. Laziness or dishonesty can lead to ruined reputation, the loss of a career, and legal problems.